Monthly forecast month of January, meteorologist Matt Noyce, one degree outside Weather Network. Thank you for making us part of your daily routine, whether it's these specials like monthly and pattern predictions or our everyday forecast, which you can find for anywhere in the country or the globe for that matter. Using the one degree outside weather app, it's free. It's five stars. It's on the App Store and Google Play. And when you grab the app, you'll see right on the home screen a link to watch our streaming network. We are New England's only streaming weather network on your smart TV, online, online. Or again, linked right in our app. And if you love winter sports, please don't overlook snowsports.wondegreeoutside.com. Danielle and I put a lot of time and attention into the discussions twice a week, plus daily maps, dozens of them, to make sure that you're in the right place for your skiing, boarding and snowmobiling as well. All right, let's dive into the monthly forecast. We're going to begin with a height to 500 millibars, how high up you have to go to get to the 500 millibar pressure level. If you're not familiar with meteorology, bottom line is the higher up you have to go, the warmer the air is on average in the atmosphere. So we color that with warmer colors. If you don't have to go up as high, it's colder air. We put that with colder colors. Well, again, one of the most elementary concepts of meteorology is when you get a clash of cold and warm, you can get storm development. So as you go through over the next few weeks and you look at this, you're watching for clashes of cold and warm. And certainly you could see some of the dips, what we call a trough, a dip in the jet stream that would happen here. But really, it's colder air that digs in. And look at this. You increase the contrast of warm to cold. You're making it more favorable for storm development. When is that? It's going to be around the 10th or 11th. We think the middle third of the month is the time when things get very interesting here, and there will be some big storms. The question is going to be, are they rain or are they snow? How much of the warmth do you get to come into play? But notice as we get out toward the 14th or 15th, there's another one of these clashes that takes place. Are we done? Not yet. We get out toward the 16th or 17th, and, you know, some energy may get left behind to the west, but if it doesn't, you're going to dig another trough. You're going to bring in another warm, cold clash. So now you've got at least three, if not on the follow-up, a fourth chance to get storm development in the eastern United States here in that middle third of the month. So that's the time we think things get very interesting and perhaps juicier storms than we've had so far this season, which isn't saying a lot, but we think that it may really turn the juice up. Notice as we get in toward the end of the month, we start to kind of recollect the coldest air in the hemisphere on our side of the North Pole. The first part of the month as the cold relaxes, we see a lot of that kind of in Siberia. But toward the end of the month, it starts to come back. And this opens the door, by the way, for the very end of the month into early February to have perhaps some shots of punishing cold that would come into play. I won't belabor the jet stream, but we're going to stop here for just a second around mid-month so you can see what I was talking about. So the jet stream is the fast river of air high in the sky that steers our storm, separates cold to the north from warm to the south. Notice there's that trough or that dip in the jet stream, opening the door to cold air and energy from the northern stream. But isn't this interesting at mid-month, right? You've got a flow off the Pacific, off of the Gulf, and up the Atlantic. You've got three different moisture sources that may be tapped in here. And that's why we're saying in that middle third of the month, you've got multiple chances to get decent storm development that actually has available moisture with it. By the end of the month, you start to flatten the jet stream back out again. You probably go back to what'll be kind of a cold, dry pattern that takes hold. So when you put it all together for the monthly forecast across the country, we have above normal temperatures across a lot of the Rockies and the southern United States. We have below normal temperatures near the Canadian border. We do think that may bleed over into parts of the North Country, New England. But admittedly, with the milder air coming in in the first third of the month in particular, third to half of the month, that means it probably is hard to be below normal across central and southern New England. We'll put it near normal. In terms of precipitation, if you're on the north side of the storm track, you should have higher amounts of precipitation. So to look at this at first, you'd say, all right, well, how come then you've got above normal over the Great Lakes, but you're not above normal in southern New England? Well, look, normal precipitation for the month in someplace like Boston, you can see here, is 3.21 inches. That's a lot. Uh, so even to say, you know what, we think there's a better chance that we go above normal on snow for the month in southern New England than there is of going above normal on actual kind of liquid melted precipitation. But we'll see where we end up. Nonetheless, this is kind of the way it looks to shape up here as we go through the course of the month. So just a reminder, if you'd like to support us in any way, shape or form, membership.onedegreeoutside.com. We are completely independently owned and we appreciate each and every one of you who supports our mission and supports what we do. Hope you have a fantastic month of January.